Hello and Assalamu Alaikum everyone. Hope you all are doing well and keeping safe at your homes. This is Sir Iman who will be teaching you computer studies for the year 2020 to 2021. Now let us start with our very first lecture. So students as you have already studied a few chapters from the same book in the previous grade we will be starting this course from chapter 6 that is memory and data storage. In this chapter we will learn about a few things. Firstly I would like to tell you that I don't always start my lecture just by explaining the characters or the objectives of the chapter. I first try my level best to explain the name of the chapter so that the student have has a better grip of that chapter but since we are studying online and now in order to not cause any confusion and make sure to make sure that uh, you understand each and everything properly we will just go with the flow and study as these slides go on so in this chapter you will learn about file formats such as MIDI mp3 and jpeg file compression techniques primary secondary and offline um, storage magnetic optical and solid state media so students let us introduce ourselves to this new chapter uh, there are many file formats used to store data be this text images or sound in computer systems so students since the moment you started using computer systems you must have seen uh, some places some formats some file formats in which you uh, save text images or sounds for text we usually use Microsoft Word for images we sometimes use photos or paint option for sound we use a media player uh, for example Windows media player or VLC media player so this chapter will consider how file compression is used to save memory when storing different types of files all computer systems have primary and secondary memory storage this thing this particular line we have been listening to this line we have been reading this line since we were in grade 6 and then in grade 7 and 8 we get to uh, see that the, we have hardware or storage chapters in our books so we have read this line a lot that there are there is primary and secondary memory storage in our computer system the main technologies are magnetic optical and solid state storage devices which use each of these technologies will be described later in this chapter together with a number of applications so these are a few things that we will be discussing in the upcoming few topics not now but yes we will be discussing about them we will be talking about them in detail uh, in the upcoming few topics file formats a number of different file formats are used in computer systems we will look at the following ones the first one is that I pronounced as MIDI in the introduction this MIDI, the full form is MID of MIDI is Musical Instrument Digital Interface. You have to make sure these four words are retained in your mind. Next one is MP3, MP4, JPEG, Text and Number Format. So let us start with Musical Instrument Digital Interface so students let me tell you that I won't be saying this word again and again so, and instead of this word this whole name I will be just saying MIDI M-I-I M-I-D-I MIDI so MIDI is always associated with storage of music files so you remember that whenever you have whenever you see a file in your computer you have to remember you have to keep in mind about MIDI that MIDI is always associated with the with storing your files with whatever files you want to store in your computer 
However, MIDI files are not music and do not contain any sound. They are very different to, for example, MP3 files. MIDI is essentially a communications protocol that allows electronic musical instruments to interact with each other. The MIDI protocol uses 8-bit serial transmission with one start bit and one stop bit and is therefore asynchronous. As you can see, I have even drawn for you uh, an 8-bit serial transmission. An asynchronous data transmission refers to data being transmitted in an agreed bit pattern. Data bits 1s and zeros are grouped together and sent within with control bits. You have you must have studied this back uh, from back in chapter number 2 about asynchronous and synchronous data transmission. A MIDI file consists of a list of commands that instruct a device. Now that device can either be an electronic organ or a sound card in a computer or in a mobile phone. How to produce a particular sound or musical note. Each MIDI command has a specific sequence of bytes. The first byte is the status byte. This informs the MIDI device what function to perform. Encoded in the status byte is the MIDI channel. MIDI operates on 16 different channels that uh, the table of which I have shown you on the screen. Now encoded in this status byte is the MIDI channel. MIDI operates on 16 different channels which are numbered 0 to 15. So students there are two MIDI uh, examples of MIDI commands. First one is note on off. Second is key pressure. So note on and off. This indicates that a key on a key electronic keyboard has been pressed or released to produce or stop producing a musical note. So it means that if you have uh, if you can see a note on it means that a key has been pressed to produce a musical note where if, you, if it indicates note off it means that a key has been released to stop producing a musical note. Key pressure this indicates how hard the key has been pressed this could indicate loudness of the music note or whether any vibrato has been used and so on. Students now there are two additional bytes are required. A pitch byte which tells the MIDI device which note to play and a velocity byte which tells the device how loud to play the, uh, how loud to play the note. When music or sound is recorded on a computer system these MIDI messages are saved in a, in a file which is recognized by the extension .midi. So remember the extension of this MIDI file is .mid. If this .mid file is played back through a musical instrument such as an electronic keyboard the music will be played back in an identical way to the original. The whole piece of music will have been stored as a series of commands but no actual music notes. This makes it a very versatile file structure since the same file could be fed back through a different electronics instrument such as an electronic guitar with different effects to the original. However, to play back through an instrument such as a guitar would need the use of sequencer software since the MIDI files would not be recognized in their raw form. So students, 
both the electronic instruments and the computer need a MIDI interface to allow them to talk to each other. You have seen an electronic inter interface in the slide in which I showed you uh, or I told you about the 16 channels of MIDI. So it was mentioned earlier that the MIDI operates on 16 channels. In fact, the computer can send data out on all 16 MIDI channels at the same time. For example, 16 MIDI devices each set up for a different MIDI channel could be connected to the computer. Each device could be playing a separate line in a song where the in a song from the sequencer software effectively creating an electronic orchestra this implementation is being more and more today in the recording studio by major orchestras and in musical uh, scores used in films now students because MIDI files don't contain any audio track their size compared with an mp3 file is considerably, considerably smaller. For example, a 10 megabyte mp3 file only requires about 10 kilobyte file size when using the MIDI format. This makes them ideal for devices where memory is an issue. For example, storing ringtones on a mobile phone. Students, thank you for listening to this lecture. Stay safe. Stay home. Allah Hafiz.